Reaction rates are usually expressed in molarity per second. A rate is typically given by a change in molarity divided by a change in time. It doesn't have to be seconds in the denominator, but usually that's what we find. And if we're talking a gas reaction, we could go with change of pressure in the numerator. But in most reactions, certainly in aqueous reactions, we're usually going to use molarity per second. If we have the concentration of a substance, x, some substance versus time, whenever you plot a graph with time in it, time is always on the x-axis, so let's plot the time, usually in seconds on the x-axis, concentration on the y-axis. If our concentration does that, we can see that over time the concentration is decreasing. We can also see that this curve has a very negative slope here, and then not quite as negative, and then less and less negative, but constantly negative. Therefore, if the change in the concentration of X is negative, that is a reactant. And that would be fairly typical. You start with a lot of it, and as time goes on, you get less and less of it. That would be for a reactant. On the other hand, if you start with not very much of substance X, and more of it appears over time, that must mean that we have a product. The slope for any product such curve you can see is always positive. It's very positive here at the beginning and then not quite as positive and not quite as positive but nonetheless positive the entire time. At least until we reach equilibrium when the slopes of everything would be zero. The instantaneous rate is the reaction rate at any given time and it's equal to the slope of the concentration time curve at any point. If we have our curve, suppose we wanted to find the instantaneous rate at this particular time, which corresponds to point P. So at this time, right down here, I'm pointing there with my laser pointer, we want to find the instantaneous rate. If you were doing it in the old-fashioned way, you would construct a tangent line, and you would find two very identifiable points that were on that line. You would write down their coordinates and then you would go rise over run and that would tell you the slope. Of course if you do this on a graphing calculator you can often pick a point and have the calculator tell you what the slope is, but it's good to have an understanding of how it's done. Coefficients in the balanced equation are used when comparing rates for substances in a reaction. Let's give you an example. At a given time, the instantaneous rate of appearance of nitrogen dioxide is 3.2 times 10 to the negative sixth molarity per second. Now, the fact that it says that this nitrogen dioxide is appearing implies that nitrogen dioxide is a product. Let's continue the problem. Find the instantaneous rates of disappearance of nitrogen monoxide and oxygen. When we say the rate of disappearance, we're talking nitrogen monoxide and oxygen as being reactants, because clearly the reactants are going to start to disappear, whereas the products are going to appear. That is a roundabout way of telling us that the NO and O2 are reactants, and NO2 is a product. In case you're wondering what NO2 looks like, it's a brownish gas. Let's balance this equation, 2, 1, 2. We're told that the rate of appearance of NO2 is 3.2 times 10 to the negative sixth molarity per second. We put a positive sign there next to the 3.2. You can see it in the lower right corner because this is appearing. We're making more of it. The rate of appearance of this is related to the rates of disappearance of these two in proportion to these coefficients in the equation that I've circled. If this coefficient on the right is a 2 and this one here on the left is a 2 
and we know that this is appearing, that is getting bigger at 3.2 times 10 to the negative sixth molarity per second, then this is getting smaller at that same rate. The oxygen has a coefficient of 1. We don't write it, but it's understood to be there, which means that that rate of disappearance will be half, that is, from 3.2 to 1.6, compared to what the NO is disappearing at. The rates are proportional to the coefficients in the balanced equation with negative signs being put in front of reactants because they're disappearing and positive signs being put in front of products because they are appearing, they're getting bigger. Let's summarize. The typical unit for rate of reaction is molarity per second, although other quantities could be used in the numerator, such as moles or a pressure unit, while the denominator simply needs some unit of time. The instantaneous rate is the reaction rate at any given time. If we know an instantaneous rate of change of one substance in a reaction, then we know the instantaneous rates of change of the other substances at that time, because those rates of change are proportional to the coefficients in the balanced equation.